Perry at Fair Oaks. Just look at him, Harold. And he didn't want to take the test. Jerry's just as good as Newsom and Warren, isn't he, Lee? Well, it looks that way to me. I think he handles that pony perfectly. He sure makes sharp turns. Boy, look at that. Well, Sergeant Alden's waving him down now. What do you mean? Well, the sergeant's seen enough. Oh. You know, Harold, that didn't look like much of a test to me. Oh, no? I'll bet you couldn't ride like that. Well, the sergeant's talking to all three of them now. Oh, I'd certainly like to hear what he's saying. You heard me. What? I said I'll bet you couldn't ride as good as Jerry. Well, that isn't what I meant, Harold. It just seems to me they'd have a longer test than that, especially as long as they're so evenly matched. I don't see how it's possible to pick the best man. All three of them did a very good job of riding. That's right, but I think Jerry was just a little better. Well, you're just saying that because you want him to get the open spot on the team. Well, don't you two? Well, certainly, but we've got to be fair about it. Now, come on. Let's walk over to that bench we were sitting on. They're taking the ponies into the stable now. Okay. Sergeant Alden had a lot to say to them. Did you notice how much he was talking? Uh-huh. Jerry will tell us what he said as soon as he comes out of the stable. You know, Lee, I think it would be swell if Jerry could make the polo team so soon. What do you mean, so soon? Well, I mean, he's only been here at Fair Oaks such a short time. And to be able to make a team, well, that's something. <laughs> You're right about that. And especially a polo team. And gee, it would make me proud to have him for a roommate. Well, here they come now. Yeah, Jerry sees us. He's coming over. Now we'll find out what happened. Well, let's wait till he catches up with us. I don't see any big smile on his face. Maybe he hasn't got such good news. I don't say that. Wait until you find out. Cully and Paul Warren are still talking to the sergeant. Maybe Jerry should have stayed, too. Well, talking won't do any good with Sergeant Alden. He's a square shooter, and he judges on merit and merit alone. Hi, Jerry. Well, what happened, Jerry? Tell us all about it. No, I don't know yet. There isn't anything to tell. You don't know? Well, didn't Sergeant Alden make a choice? Come on, don't keep us waiting, Jerry. What did he say? Well... He said it was a tie. He said each one of us was as good as the other. Well, then why didn't he make you ride some more to break the tie? Oh, I don't know. He said he could see we were all good horsemen, that any one of us would make a good polo player. But he didn't pick the winner? No. He said he'd have to take it up with Captain Gardner. What for? What's Captain Gardner got to do with it? No, I don't know, but that's what he said. He rated us even and said he'd uh, talk it over with the captain and decide which one of us was to get the open position on the team. Well, come on. Let's take a walk down to the lake. You haven't seen it yet, Jerry. Okay. Well, anyway, you didn't lose yet. No, but... Well, I bet I'm not picked. Now, why do you say that? Well, do you think they'd pick me ahead of older boys? Maybe. Why not? Sergeant Alden's a good coach, Jerry. He's been turning out wonderful first-string polo teams every year. He doesn't care about age or seniority or personality. He's just interested in getting good polo players. I guess that's right, Jerry. Of course it's right. If you row just as well as Cully Newsom and Paul Warren, well, then you've got just as good a chance as they have for the open position. Yeah, I suppose so, but still... Well, they're bigger and stronger than I am, too. and They'd most likely swing a polo stick a lot better than me. You know, Jerry, you talk as though you didn't want to make the team. Oh, don't get me wrong, Lee. I do want to make the team. You sure don't act it. Well, I want to make the team, but I want to stay on it, too. Hmm? Well, what good would it be to make the team and then get taken off because I couldn't play? Every cadet at Fair Oaks would laugh at me. Oh, I'm beginning to see how you feel now. Oh, but I can straighten that out. Listen, if you get on one of the second-string teams, you'll learn to play polo all right, see? Sergeant Alden will see to that. 
He doesn't expect you to be able to play a good game right off. All he wants is good riders, and then he'll turn out good polo players. That's right, Jerry. The second string team is just just so you can learn the game. Oh, now let's forget about it. Both Captain Gardner and Sergeant Alden will be very fair, and, well, tomorrow we'll know the results. There's the lake now, Jerry. Oh, yeah. Say, let's walk down to the shore before we go out on the pier. Okay, this way, Jerry. Boy, what a lake. Hey, I didn't think it was this big. See the island way out there? Well, what do you know about that? Mm -hmm. Lake Hiawatha is one of the biggest lakes in this part of the country, Jerry. It was named after that great Indian, wasn't it? Mm, that's right. He, uh, Lee, has the uh, island got a name, too? Uh, yeah, they call it Woodman's Island. Hey, is there anyone living out there in that queer little shack? No, no, it's deserted. Nobody knows who built it or how long it's been there. <laughs> it's pretty much of a mystery. Gee. Hey, look it. What? See way over there on the other shore? There's smoke coming up over there. Gee, I hope it's not a forest fire. <laughs> Don't worry about that, Jerry. Now, if there wasn't smoke coming up, then there'd be something to worry about. Well, what do you mean, Lee? Well, Jerry, that smoke's coming from a little cabin. That's the hermit's place. Uh, a hermit? No, not exactly, no. An old soldier lives out there, all alone. Every evening about this time, he builds a fire in his fireplace as regular as clockwork. Oh. Uh, but what do you mean if there wasn't any smoke, we'd have something to worry about? Well, he's pretty old, Jerry. Not any too active. But as long as there's smoke coming from his chimney, we know he's all right. Oh, I see. Have you ever hiked around there to see him, Lee? No, I haven't. And I don't think I ever will, either. I'll bet you're scared of him. No, I'm not. But as long as he doesn't want company, why bother him? Well, I should think he'd get lonesome out there all alone and like to see someone once in a while. Well, it's a long story. Old Grumpy used to be friendly years Grumpy? ago, but... Grumpy? Is that his name? <laughs> no, but that's what they call him. Because he's so cross and mean all the time. Hey, let's go this way now. We'll go out on the pier. Okay. Uh, but go ahead. Uh, what were you saying about Grumpy? Oh, yeah. Well, it seems that when he first settled here on the shore of Lake Hiawatha, he built an old shack right over there near the stable. He lived there until just a few years ago when they built the new stable and paddock. Hmm, I think I know what you mean. He was uh, kicked off. Huh? <laughs> no, I, no, I wouldn't put it that way, Jerry. He was asked to leave. After all, he, he didn't own the property. And he'd had free rent for years. Maybe he got mad because he couldn't take a shack with him. Well, he did get upset, but... Major Davis was awfully good to him. He hired a couple of men to help him move his belongings, and then he gave him money to buy lumber to build a new place, and even sent a good carpenter out there to help him put up a decent cabin to live in. Well, and what's he grumpy about? Well, I guess he just didn't like the idea of being asked to move. At any rate, he's never given any of the cadets a very nice welcome when they've gone out there. Does he ever come over to this side of the lake? Sure, I guess so. Yeah, he comes over into Fair Oaks once a month or so to buy provisions and get his check. His check? Yeah. He gets a small pension check from the government. That's all he has to live on. No, oh, I was wondering where he got his money. Well, what do you think of the view from here, Jerry? Oh, boy, this is nice, isn't it? Do you know the water's over ten feet deep out there at the end of the pier? Really? Sure, isn't it, Lee? Mm -hmm, that's right. Well, there's the boathouse back there. Oh, yeah. And there's the racing boat. The shells, Jerry. <laughs> oh, is that what you call them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd sure like to row one sometime. Can you row? Oh, a little. Boy, maybe you can make the plebe crew. Wouldn't that be keen? I don't know about that. Jerry's pretty light to have much of a stroke. But say, I'll tell you what. You'd make a grand coxswain, Jerry. Uh, uh, what's that? Well, that's the man that sits in the back and does the steering and gives the orders. Oh. Well, uh, don't you have to work up to a job like that? Seems to me you'd have to row first before they'd let you be the boss. No, no, Jerry. Coxswains are picked because they're light and they won't weigh the shell down too much. You would be good for that job, Jerry. Why don't you see about it? Maybe I will. Yeah, I'd like that. <laughs> well, first we'll see how your chances are to make the polo team, huh, Jerry? <laughs> yeah, uh, one thing at a time. Right. Look, here comes a boat. Way around the bend. See it? No, where? Look now. Right out there. Way out. See it? Oh, I don't see it either. I mean, oh, yeah, I see it now. I don't see how you can tell which way it's headed, Harold. I didn't say I mean what way it was coming. I just said, here comes a boat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> see, I wonder who it is. It's traveling pretty fast. How many boats do you think there are in the lake, Lee? Mm, I don't know exactly. I guess about 50 besides the boats here at school. Who else owns the boats on the lake? Oh, a lot of folks from the town of Fair Oaks. There's a regular little harbor around the bend. That boat is coming this way. See? See, I believe you're right. Sure it is. You can tell by the waves. It's an outboard. Hey, maybe it's Captain Gardner. Has he got a boat? Sure. Quite a few of the instructors have. Captain Roland owns a speedboat, one of the fastest on the lake. He's the crew coach, Jerry. He's the one to see about that place in the crew. Say, it is Captain Gardner, and Mrs. Gardner's with him. Now you'll get to meet Mrs. Gardner, Jerry. 
Hey, come on, let's get over to the other side of the pier and help them dock. Say, are, are we allowed out here? Certainly. You're never off limits any place down by the lake during free periods. Except during crew practice. You're not allowed in the dock then. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Here they come. Yeah, and they see us. Yeah, Mrs. Garner's waving at us. Right over on this side, Jerry. This is where they tie up. Okay, I'm right behind you. Now, come on, Harold. Okay, now, let's wait right here. Hey, that's a keen little boat, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And Captain Gardner gets a lot of enjoyment out of it. He's out in it every chance he gets. Say, uh, when they pull up, I'll grab the rope and pull the bow in, and you fellas get the stern, huh? Okay. okay. What's this? The Naval Reception Committee? <laughs> <laughs> Careful, Harold. Don't lean out too far. Yes, ma'am. I'm watching. Uh, give me your hand, Lee. Yes, sir. That's it easy now. Ah, uh, bring me there. Yep. There we are. Oh, hello, Linwell and Dugan. Hello, hello sir. Uh, help Mr. Gardner out of the boat, Lee. Yes, sir. Uh, never mind covering the boat. Kirk will take care of that later. Yes, sir. Well, well, so this is Jerry Dugan. I've been anxious to meet you, Jerry. I've been anxious to meet you, too, Mrs. Gardner. We'll see a lot of each other starting tomorrow. Your arithmetic tests were very good. You'll be in my class every morning. I'm sure glad of that. Tell me, how have you been getting along? Oh, just fine, thank you. I'd like to have you come over to our quarters some evening, Jerry. Both Captain Gardner and myself would like to hear some of your experiences with the circus. That's right, Jerry. You promised me we'd have a talk sometime. Well, I think it's safe to say you've been a fairly busy boy these past few days. <laughs> yes, I have. Well, we'll just have to let you get settled first. But don't forget, you've been invited, and any night you want to get out of the study period and visit with us, I'll arrange it. Uh, excuse me, sir. Oh, yes, Lee? Uh, Jerry took the writing test this afternoon for polo. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten about that. How'd you make out? Well, Sergeant Alden said all three of us were good, and he's going to talk with you about making a choice. Why, Jerry, I didn't know you were a horseman. Oh, Jerry rode with the circus. Well, now, isn't that fine? Uh, who were the other boys? Uh, Cadets Newsom and Warren, sir. Hmm. Well, I'll see what Sergeant Alden has to say, and we'll pick the right man. You know that, don't you, Jerry? Yes, sir. You boys going to stay here at the lake for a while? Uh, yes, sir, I, I believe we will. Well, I'll see you in the morning, Jerry. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye, boys. Goodbye, Mr. Gardner. Goodbye, Captain Gardner. Goodbye, Goodbye, Captain Gardner. Well, it's all set, Jerry. Well, what do you mean? That open position on the polo team. Captain Gardner likes you, Jerry. You don't have to worry about not being picked. It's a cinch. <laughs> 